Okay, and at the very beginning of our React performance journey, let's see what exact issue we're trying to solve. So first in the app, JSX navigate to this folder. So tutorial 11, performance, starter, zero one and lower state. And once you get there, you'll see that it's a pretty typical application. I have here index JSX. This is where my components meet. In this case, it's just a list. And also there's a person component. Now in the index JSX, I have two state values. One is people, which is using data, which is coming from our data file as the default one. And I also have the count and the initial value is zero. So at the top, I have the button and below it, I have a list component where I'm passing in the people prop. You can probably already guess that in the list, I'm just going to iterate over it and return a person component. And in a person component, I simply render a name. And in here I have a console log. That's it. I mean, it's not a magical application. So here's what I want to show you though. What's really interesting that every time I will click on a button and I'll increase the count, my person component will re-render. So at the moment you're looking at the console and you can see, okay, I have four renders. Well, that makes sense. I have four people in the array. I can clearly see that on the screen. However, what we probably don't expect is this. Notice every time I click, I'm getting more renders. Now, is it the end of the world in this application? Absolutely not. Again, these are just example applications where we're trying to take a look at the issue and what solutions we have. However, in a bigger application, if you have a component tree of whatever, 60 components, yeah, that is an issue if you're basically re-rendering for nothing. You're just changing one value here in the lower state component, and then your entire tree constantly just re-renders. Now, before we take a look at the tools and solutions and all that, let's discuss why is that happening. So if we navigate back to a readme file, you'll see that when we covered re-renders, I mentioned this component re-renders when the state or props change, correct? But if you take a look at the setup right now, you are probably wondering, okay, but nothing changes over here. So the people stay the same as well as the person stays the same, right? Whatever I'm passing in the list, it's not changing. It's pretty much the same thing. I'm just passing in that person object. So. There's another reason why components re-render, and that is when the parent element re-renders. So what's happening here in the index JSX every time we update the count, what do we do? We trigger re-render, correct? We covered that when we talked about use state, the set function. And what happens? The list, which is a child, also re-renders. Once the list re-renders, what's happening with person component, it also re-renders. And before we take a look at the tools, let me also quickly cover something that has been popping up in a course Q&A and essentially is this. Setting up a use effect is not going to solve our issue. So let me navigate here, notice this use effect. Let me save and refresh. Yep, I have now two console logs, four for render and four for this log inside of the use effect. And technically, as I'm clicking, I only see the render. However, this doesn't stop the component from re-rendering. Essentially, the only thing we're doing, we're invoking whatever functionality we have here in the use effect when the initial render takes place. But the component itself still keeps re-rendering. So yes, it's a solution if you have some kind of function that you don't want to trigger each and every time the component re-renders. However, it's not going to solve the issue of person component re-rendering just because the parent component re-rendered. And if you still don't believe me in the next video, we'll cover tools 
and then you'll definitely see what I'm talking about.